thank you to all the participants for joining us today. Welcome to Barnett's web seminar on the monitoring of oncology clinical trials. The field of oncology research has experienced a huge growth in the past decade or so, representing about 20% of agents currently in development. This increase in trials has led to a growing demand for experienced monitors in the oncology arena. So we've designed this course to provide you with an overview of oncology-specific logistics, clinical, and ethical considerations. So let's get started. Let's get started with some introductions. My name is Vanessa LaRoche, and I'm a research professional with about 19 years of experience in human subjects research protection. I've served in many roles over the past years. I was a clinical research coordinator for many years. I also served as a CRA or monitor for quite some time. I ran a, a very large research unit at a very prominent academic medical center as a clinical research program and operations manager. I was an IRB compliance officer at that institution as well, and currently I'm in the quality assurance arena as a quality insurance auditor. I have about 10 years experience in monitoring and auditing. Eight of those years were specifically focused on oncology trials. And also at that academic medical center, I did serve as the compliance officer for uh, an oncology board at the IRB. So I have a bit of experience in the oncology arena as well. At the end of today's session, you should be able to apply the knowledge learned to these monitoring tasks specifically for studies in the oncology therapeutic area. To begin, it's important for us to understand that core GCP requirements don't differ between oncology trials and trials in other therapeutic areas. Requirements for informed consent to protect research subjects, appropriate investigator selection, and investigator responsibilities as detailed in FDA Form 1572 still apply to oncology trials. Investigators are required to maintain control of investigational products, and sponsors have responsibilities for providing information about the use and storage of investigational products, just like in any other trials. And finally, oncology trials must be managed and conducted by qualified individuals working within systems designed to ensure quality. This includes sponsors determining the appropriate extent and nature of monitoring. For example, determining how much on-site versus remote monitoring may be appropriate for that trial, determining intervals for monitoring, and selecting and training monitors. So none of, none of these requirements in oncology trials differ from other trials, but how they're satisfied may be different than what you're used to in those trials in other therapeutic areas. One area of potential difference lies in the characteristics of monitors and investigators and sites that work within the oncology field. So here's our first question. What do you think? In what ways could monitor training and qualification requirements different for an oncology trial? So raise your hand if you have any thoughts and send them in the chat. Okay, some possible responses. In the oncology field, more years of general monitoring experience may be required. Specific oncology standards also may be required. Uh, specific training such as RESYST and CTCAE training may be required. And there may be a higher level of clinical knowledge required so that you understand the expected side effects from chemo chemotherapy and the disease progression versus those side effects known for the study and AEs. You may need familiarity with oncology-specific source documentation and charting. And the sponsors expect the monitors to have the same competencies as oncology research nurses or oncology study coordinators. 